So like, what do you want? You want the room to be just like literally just massive? You want the room to be like a Doctor Who TARDIS? Like you walk in and it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside? What is the logic there? You want the, the like, we want to break the rules of the entire universe to make sure that you're comfortable in a room. That's ridiculous. Why don't you just lose weight? How many, how many of the times if you have to go through these issues and have these particular types of things that don't fit you. I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous, dude. Like you're going through situations where anytime, like I always say this, right? Being in America is such a privilege when you want to be fat because here in America, dude, our, our stuff is already pretty oversized, right? Am I wrong on saying that? Like we accommodate a lot of people here in America. Sure, things could be better. I agree, things could be better. But overall, in a general speaking sense, we're pretty good. Now you go over to like Asian countries or like other, like even European countries, you're not going to get the same type of accommodation. And if you're walking through like turnstiles and you can't fit on the seats because, <laughs> because airplanes are trying to maximize the profit as best as they can. Yes, capitalism. And you can't buy clothes anywhere because nothing fits people in other countries to that size. Because guess what? Most of the time in other countries like this, being fat is like an anomaly. Okay? Here in America, it's like second nature. Like when I walk down the street and I see a very fat person, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, fat person. America. Makes sense. Yeah, right? Makes sense. But if you're in like, I don't even know where you are here, Vietnam or something like that, when you're in another country like that, it is an anomaly to see somebody above like 250. Because that's like... Bro, how'd you get to that size, right? How do you have time to get to that size? How are you not working all the time to burn off those calories, right? And they're not going to be accommodating for those things because those people just don't exist, you know? So whenever I hear these people complaining, they complain a lot. I mean, obviously, this entire video is her just complaining about the fact that she can't buy clothes or fit in. You know, the next one is hilarious. This is ridiculous. You know, you if you can't fit into a bathrobe, at what point do you realize that you need to do something with yourself, right? What are you in an elevator doing this, dude? Okay, first of all, dude, this is highly inappropriate. What if, what if somebody like, opened the door and they're like, you know, like they, they open the door and they just goes like, oh yeah, honey, it's so tough. <gasps> oh my God, Jesus, can you tighten that up a little bit? No, can't do nothing about that. It's a little scary, a little scary. Why is it a shrug? Chairs leave bruises and marks. Such a privilege. Don't, isn't it beautiful nowadays? We have nothing else to fight for. So we have to come up with our own battles against chairs. For, for the longest time, what were we fighting for? Free in acts, free free good good foods, okay? Rights and things like that for, for minorities, and that's great. What are we fighting for now? Chairs. Can't fit in chairs anymore. I don't even know what enemy that is. Like, who do you complain about when it comes to not being able to fit into a chair? Like, what do you do? Like, you, you go to the carpenter and go like, hey, dude, this is fucking fat, but I can't believe you made this chair hurt my leg like that. Oh, you didn't do it on purpose? And you're just making chairs for the majority of people? Oh, well, guess what? I'm 450 and I need a big chair. So next time you make a chair, make them ginormous and give it to me for free. You just, just stop complaining. Just stop complaining. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Just showing off the entitlement of people it, it, and they have no problem. They have absolutely no problem being entitled and carrying through their lives in a very entitled format. Why do girls put their legs up like that? That's one, something I've noticed before. It's like girls will do that thing with their leg. I just want to see it. Like, you see how, like, the leg goes up a little bit, you know? Like, I, what is that? I've seen so many girls doing that when they take pictures, the side profile, and they always lift up the one leg, and they go like that a little bit. You can't see my leg, but it's, like, straight, and then the, the, it goes up. Like, you're you're just, like, pivoting the leg up. Why do you, why? Why do you do that? Is that, like, the equivalent of guys going like this when they take pictures? Is that the same thing, or is, is that, like, the guy's version? Somebody let me know down below. I'm concerned. And she's doing this while she has an iPhone, by the way. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. I really, really love that we can be so incredibly privileged to be like, dude, chairs don't fit me. It's the chair's fault, not me. Uncomfortable, tiny plane seats. At what point do you take accountability? How ungodly levels of entitled are you that nothing can ever be your problem nothing is ever your fault and you have to you have to make sure that everybody knows too that you're incredibly privileged and you think that the world should accommodate you even though that's an incredibly unrealistic ask like what you're doing basically is dude to sit there and say chairs okay 
you might have something with chairs. Chairs can be a little bit smaller. You can maybe look around for a chair. I don't know where you're going to find one, though. And if you're talking about, like, plain seats, you're talking about, like, these things you do understand are made for the majority of people, right? The majority of people in these other countries are not that size. So when you're going to other countries and you're expecting these other countries to have accommodations for people of size or bigger people, big, ginormous people, it's going to be, it's an impractical ask. It's already really, really ridiculous to ask here in America because most of the stuff that you're asking for is just not something that we can change. I don't know what it, like, how do you expect anybody to go through all of the, all of the, all, all of it, right? All of the uh, uh, structures in America, everything that we do, how we make clothing, how we do foods, how we do everything. You want us to completely change the entire infrastructure system here in America to better suit fat people. It's just unrealistic. And then going to other countries and then complaining that like basic stuff like chairs and bathrooms don't fit. Where? Where do you get off with this level of entitlement? <laughs> Bathroom stalls with what? I'm sorry. I got to go back. I have to see that one more time. Bathrooms. This is, it is a little uncomfortable. I'll give you that, dude. But I would have no problem sitting in this. I would be more concerned. You remember that one scene in Austin Powers when, like, the guy was sitting down taking a shit? And then Austin Powers, or was it Austin Powers? I don't know. It was the guy that had the lucky, the lucky charms. And he came up behind the guy, Austin Powers, like, behind the, the toilet. And he started choking him, right? That's what I would be concerned about because this, like, door right here. What is this door for? You know, one thing I really love about other countries, bro, look how clean this is. You see how clean this is? Have you ever been in a public bathroom that's been this clean? I've been into airport bathrooms that have not been this clean. I remember one time I was at the airport bathroom. Um, granted, I wasn't taking the flight, so it was like the airport bathroom before the, the actual airport, the one that you have to go to like TSA and stuff like that. Anyway, there was blood like in the fucking, in the bathroom. Like I walked in and there wasn't blood when you first walked in, but like when I went around to the stalls, there was blood and it was, <laughs> it was like all over the floors and it was leading towards one bathroom and that was it. Like there was nobody that was cleaning it. Nobody was talking about it and there was nobody else in there besides me and this other guy and he didn't even care. He was just like washing his hands. He just looked at me, kept washing his hands, just walked out and I was just like, oh, okay, I guess this is just normal, I guess. Kind of like when you're 10 years old and a kid grabs your ass and you just kind of like, you're about to fight him, but then he grabs another person's ass and you go, oh, this is normal. This is just what he does. This is completely fine, right? It's not It's not, It's not. not like abnormal to have an, a fellow 10-year-old kid also grab your ass, right? Because he's doing it too to another person. So you just kind of assume that it's just a normal thing that happens. No, it's not normal. It's not normal, okay? And to be in another country and have the privilege of having a toilet this beautiful, it, this is a privilege, okay? And also, I want to touch on this. Look at the stalls. There's nothing underneath it. There's nothing. There's nothing more uncomfortable than, to, than being in a bathroom like this and seeing another man's feet and toes when you're taking a piss. I don't know about you guys. I don't shit in public bathrooms. I've never done it in my entire life. It is a bragging point. It's something I put on my resume whenever I apply to a job. It has never take shit in public bathroom. But it is still very uncomfortable to be, you know, pulling out your long john silver, looking down at the toilet, and then looking over and seeing some guy's crusty feet when he, Cause you know these dudes nowadays, they all wear flip flops. It'll be like December and dudes will still be wearing flip flops. I don't know, I don't know why. But you look over and you see these guys with flip flops, crust, crusty, crunchy toes. The, look, some, some, some of these white dudes, they need to take some lessons from black guys, okay? Lubricate your feet. It's all right to put moisturizer on your feet. It's not gay. It's not like cu culturally insensitive to moisturize your toenails. Dude, these dudes will be walking around with the most crunchy, crusty toes, bunions all over, up and down. And I'm just like gazing upon this shit. And I stop peeing because I'm so uncomfortable looking at another man's feet. Like, is that, am I alone in this? Can somebody let me know down below? But I've never taken a shit in a public bathroom. So I can never like confess to the fact I, it's a very vulnerable position to even be in a public bathroom in general, but I couldn't even imagine what it'd be like if you were taking a shit and then like somebody was like, I don't know, blowing it up. Right. Or something like that. You know, I remember one time I was, I was at the, the, the movie theater with my friend and we were watching the Avengers and I went to the bathroom right after the movie. Cause I had to hold it for the movie was like four hours long. It was crazy anyway. So I went to the bathroom right after there was a ton of people in there. And I didn't, I don't like using the wall stalls because I'm afraid that somebody might look over and see my big long John Silver. So I like to use the regular stalls, the regular toilet stalls. So I waited, waited, waited. Finally, somebody came out. I went in and I, there was a guy next to me in the other stall. And I swear this dude just hit me with the, oh my God. Oh my God. My dick is big. And the whole fucking bathroom was just laughing. And I was just thinking about, 
Like, what? Obviously, hopefully it was a joke. But then again, I was like, why would this ever be something that you would ever joke about? You know, like, why would you think this is the time and the place to joke about how massive your meat Ladon is? And, but that guy was doing it. But then I was also thinking, is this like the time frame? Like, you're sitting there, you're looking at your penis while you're pissing, and then you go, damn, my shit is really big. Never in your life, you have never acknowledged it before this point. Just this one time when you're watching the Avengers and you go to the, use the bathroom, you finally look down and you see a penis for what it really is. The giant Megalodon massive meat that you have. And then you have, to, you have to announce it to everybody in the public restroom. I don't know. I thought it was a magical experience. I would definitely... This is concerning, dude. I would not be sitting on this, bro. This is crazy. You're putting a lot of trust in that th this these these fabrics. This is sad. Okay, when I see people doing this, I don't know where how do you not have embarrassment for this? Like if you're making a video and you go like you try to pull down the train, it bumps off your belly. You got a little belly bounce because you you can't put down the train anymore. How do you not look at that and go, "Yeah, it's time for a change." Uh, Man, I'm really just ginormous at this point. I can't even put down the, the tray? I can't even put down the tray anymore? That should be the time frame where you go, I need to lose some weight. But instead of losing weight, you're going to complain about it on TikTok. <laughs> Beds with slats. Although, although I may come across problems as a plus-size traveler, I don't regret a single day of travel I had. Uh, my confidence has grown 1,000 times over, and I've had some incredible experiences. That's awesome. I'm so happy. But you know the issue, right? Is that I don't think that you should have a regret of traveling. I think you should have a regret of being plus size while you're doing anything in life. Because you can literally increase the productivity of doing all of this stuff by not complaining about any of it. And then also enjoy by enjoy by actually walking across the terrains and sightseeing and things like that. I couldn't even imagine the amount of like strain your body is under doing these activities on a daily basis while being fat. And then complaining about it on TikTok, obviously. Some How much money do these people have, man? What what, like, what was that, like 10 different places? How do you have enough money to go anywhere, man? Am I alone in this? Am I just poor? Like, I've never been... <laughs> am I wrong? Like, I've never been outside the country. I mean, I don't like going anywhere, really. Um, but, like, in terms of outside the country, I like America the most. I don't know. I've never been in a situation where I was like, oh, I have thousands of dollars that I am not using. I guess I'll just throw it down the drain and go traveling for a week and a half. I've never thought about that. I never thought about doing that. Maybe I'm not like the one for experiencing other countries. Maybe you can leave it down below. Please tell me, am I weird? Because I've never once thought that I was going to spend like high denominations of money to travel across the world. How much money does it even cost? Like to be in other countries, don't you have to like, doesn't it cost money to like rent rooms and go to other places and things like that? Aren't you looking at literally like five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars? Am I wrong? Somebody let me know. Because it's got to be expensive, right? Like you're on yachts, you're on boats, you're buying food, you're renting rooms, you're going, you're traveling, you're not cooking, you can't cook, so it's going to be really expensive for that. You're probably buying stuff while you're out there because you want souvenirs, because you want to tell everybody how cool you are, right? I don't know, It's and you're probably taking another person on the trip with you. I don't know, somebody let me know that below. Some idiot asshole commented on a creator I follow's post about... Plus size movement class is crazy, bro. You see this shit? Plus size movement class. Can you imagine being so fat that you've given up on losing weight so you just go into your own bracket of movement classes? Crazy. How some idiot asshole commented on a creator I follow's post about how her unhealthy lifestyle, some bullshit, somebody else commented lifestyle. And I'm just like, when did being fat equal having a lifestyle? living in a general way of speaking is a lifestyle. So like it, it, it really depends on how you do things. When you're fat, you have to dictate your life based off of those things. Like when you're thin, it's the same thing. But the thing is when you're thin, most things, as you guys obviously know, I've literally heard you guys complain about this all the time. Being thinner means that you can navigate the world in a freer format because you're not going to be prohibited by the boundaries of being fat and things like walking. Okay. Like that's obvious. Okay. So my lifestyle is going to be less limited by those things compared to your lifestyle, which we all know you complain about constantly, which is like, you know, the, the being fat in general. So yes, it's a lifestyle, um, but you don't have to classify it as that. I've literally met, I've literally seen so many fat creators that call it a lifestyle, but if you don't want to call it that, that's fine too. I mean, I know what it is. It's fat stereotypes. 
I don't know if it's a stereotype, dude, okay? Like, if we're talking about fat people that are complaining about not being able to walk upstairs and not being able to have access to, like, clothes and, like, what we just saw with that last lady, not being able to tie towels around her anymore because towels don't fit, which is a crazy thing to even say, then, yes, it's not a stereotype anymore. Most fat people are going to have these problems. A stereotype... A stereotype is like a joking way of saying like a particular race or demographic of person has to deal with these particular things. Like for instance, black guys have cocoa butter. Blah, it's so funny, right? But not all black guys have cocoa butter, right? Not, I would even go as so far as say most black guys have cocoa butter. So there's that. But when we're talking about being fat, yes, there's a ton of overlap when these quote unquote stereotypes when it comes to you guys, okay? But we've all agreed that not all thin people hit the gym all the time. True. They don't always eat the most healthy, nutritious foods. True. So being thin isn't a lifestyle. Yeah, but you're not doing anything extreme to make yourself un... When you are fat, I think these people have such a crazy way of like... They have such a crazy way of trying to organize their mind to, 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 to make sure that they are right. When you are fat or obese... You have to do something very extreme to try to make yourself that size. It's not something like, if I'm thin, that means I'm eating what I'm supposed to eat and I'm maintaining that through diet and exercise. When you are obese, you have to do something very, very extreme, like eat like very dynamically high calorie counts to be the weight that you are. And then you have to also maintain that so you're eating a large amount to maintain it. You understand? So that's the difference. It's not the same thing. I'm sick of people like com comparing thin and fat. It's not the same thing. But being fat is apparently. It's very much reminding me of how we can all agree that people can be naturally thin. Don't, don't do it. Don't, 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 don't say that. Don't, don't say what I'm going to, don't, don't say what I think you're going to say. I'm going to take a guess and say this person thinks that being obese is a natural thing or something like, like it's it, being thin is natural. Therefore being fat is natural. But again, being thin means that you're eating what you're supposed to eat and maintaining your size, okay? Maintaining the size that you are supposed to be. Whereas when you're obese, you could be potentially eating double or triple what you should be eating daily. That's something extreme that you have to stretch outside the boundaries of normality in order to achieve. But I guess it's really up to your definition of what is normal, I guess. I mean, it, it, beauty's in the eye of the beholder and the same thing. But most people, when they hear normal bodies, they're not thinking about somebody that's fucking 450 fucking pounds is it normal not to be able to walk because you're so big i don't think so dude no but no we can all agree that people can be naturally thin yes but nobody nobody's naturally fat right yes that is true nobody is naturally fat this is a factual statement thank you for addressing the truth nobody is naturally fat because you are doing something extreme in order to be fat. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's all so exhausting and so boring. It's probably really exhausting when you weigh double or triple how much you're supposed to weigh. Anything will be exhausting at that point. Yeah. Hey, me. Yeah, you. The one that hides wrappers because you're too ashamed to show people that live in your home what you ate. What do you mean hide wrappers? Like Eminem, Lil Wayne and shit like that? No, obviously she's talking about like candies candy wrappers and stuff like that what do you mean hiding them like under your pillow okay anyway that you ate that maybe you had a snack you have nothing to hide you have nothing to hide okay okay don't bury those wrappers in the trash don't hide them under the bed don't Who's hiding wrappers under the bed that's crazy why under the bed of all places you know what i knew a kid oh man dude i knew this kid when i was growing up and what he would do was he would pick his nose and he, like behind his bed, if you pulled out his bed, he would pick his nose and then put it on the, behind his bed and then he would push his back. And I remember one day I was over this kid's house and his mom found it and I was there that day. And she like undid the bed and there was a mural of boogers all across this dude's wall. I cannot believe a child, a human being is capable of doing something like that. That's that's the type of shit that you would see on like children's show for like Ed and Eddie. And you go, ha, that's so funny. Guys do crazy stuff. And, but you think that's obviously not something that people do, right? It's not something that people do. But then you see it and you go, what the fuck, dude? And they, they he had told me that about, yeah, like, bro, I'm, I'm collecting boogers behind my wall. And I was like, okay, yeah, he's probably like, it's probably a few boogers or something like that. I guess he thought it was cool, which it wasn't cool. I don't know why he would think that I thought it was cool. Anyway, his mom found it 
and she was screaming, dude. She was like throwing stuff. It was crazy. She told me to leave and um, he got beat up, dude. His mom beat him up because he had so many boogers. It was like the whole the whole width of his bed was just boogers, dude. Can you believe that? How I don't know how long it was there. He said that he had been growing it for like at least three months, which is crazy. Think about how many boogers you could place upon your wall in three months. But anyway, dude, yeah, I guess that's probably a lot better. No, it's worse. That's worse than hiding wrappers under your bed. Don't bury those wrappers in the trash. Don't hide them under the bed. Don't what is the point of this video? Like, are you telling people that they don't have to hide the fact that they're eating really high calorie counts from people that obviously think that's not good to be eating that amount of calories? If you're hiding it, that probably means there's some merit to why you shouldn't be doing it in the first place, right? Am I wrong in saying that? Like, if you live with your parents and your parents say, it's okay to eat, ca it's okay to eat candy, but don't eat so much candy that you might become overweight or obese, right? That's probably okay. I mean, if your parents are telling you straight out, don't eat candy, that's probably not good. But yeah, it's probably, there's probably some merit there, right? Am I wrong? It's kind of like when people cheat and they don't tell the other person that they're cheating, right? Because they know it's wrong. Hide them in the bags or in your purse. My purse? What? Okay. You don't need to take them out to the garage or to the trash chute. Who, who do you think you're talking to? Like, who, who is this video for? This is a very particular person you're talking to right now. Hi, don't hide them in your bag, your purse, or throw them out in the trash chute under the bed. Who are you talking to? Like, who is the person that you're thinking of when you made this video? Because these are way too specific statements to, to apply to most people. Immediately after eating, you can actually just throw just like you would anything else, you can throw it out right on the top of that trash can. You okay. have nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, I don't know about that, dude. If the person is hiding them, then it probably is some shame involved. And I'm sorry, it feels like you do. Okay? Here's your challenge. Here's your reminder. Don't hide that wrapper, babe. Okay. Let it be. Let it be. Don't hide the wrapper. Listen to Eminem fully, on repeat. Don't care about it, okay? This is, uh, this is a very weird video. I don't know who she's talking about, but if you... <laughs> go ahead, eat the candy, dude. Don't feel bad about it. Embrace the candiness. Embrace the wrappers. Throw the wrappers and put them on full display to declare dominance. Yeah, I ate that fucking Snickers bar and the Milky Way. And guess what else, too? I dipped my dick in the applesauce two days ago, and I saw you eat it. What you gonna do about it? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Anyway, I just wanna know how people... Like, how do you get here? Like, how do you how do you think like this? Pure shit advice. Calorie deficit is a disproven, outdated model. Doesn't work. Eat real food. Calories don't matter. The one metric that we can use, absurdly, that will make you lose weight. It, just don't use it. Don't use it. Never count calories is one of the worst things you could possibly do if you're ever trying to do anything to do with weight. You have to at least understand where you stand with your calories, and then you adjust based off of those things. Otherwise, you're just eating food. I mean, granted, you could always do the thing of like, oh, I'm going to eat until I can't, and then if I gain weight, then I'm going to eat less, and then if I still gain weight, then I'm going to eat less. You can do that. You don't have to count calories on that particular front, but you are still technically counting calories just more in an obscure way. You don't actually see the numbers. So even that doesn't even make sense. So no, you still, it, how is it outdated? By, by how do you even determine something to be outdated? Like the wheel was invented like 200,000 years ago. Is that outdated? Is that how that works? Like something that was invented at one point and then somebody determines it to be outdated because it was a long time ago? How do you determine something to be outdated? What does that even mean? What? No, don't listen to this. No, count your calories. Nothing wrong with counting calories. <laughs> Thinking about how being fat means you're denied a very large portion of what's considered normal and healthy part of the human experience. We need to talk about this more. We need to stop normalizing how fat people are shut off from large swaths of normal and healthy human, human experiences. But like when people say this, right, when you say that fat people are denied a large sections of society, then like I agree this is true. But in the very, like, we, it's a very weird way of saying, I did it to myself, right? Like, it's fine to say that you guys can't walk. It's fine to say that you need elevator access. It's like, it's okay to have accessibility things that are going to benefit you. I'm not saying we should take those things away, but I think it's very, very cringy to sit there and say that we're denied big sections of society because why? Like, why? Can we talk about that? Why is that the thing? Like, it's not that society is telling you you can't do that, right? It's not like Jim Crow, where, like, we had entire government systems dedicated to the discrimination of black people. No, 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 no. Nobody's doing that. There's nothing on the books, right? 
What's actually happening is that you're taking your body and you're eating so much food that you're taking away all the all all of the accessibility options of doing normal things like walking. Like when you say this, right? Your 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 large swaths of 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 the normal human being experience, like walking, like walking, like going upstairs, like those things are those are normal human being activities, right? How how are we supposed to give those back to you when you are literally doing it to yourself? That's ridiculous. You can't you can't say that and then not acknowledge how you got there, right? Am I wrong in saying that? Anyway. Okay. That's the thing. Fat phobes believe that fat people shouldn't. Okay, first of all, it's not that we it's not that I don't believe that I'm a fat phobe, but I, in all honesty, they probably would consider most me and you fat phobic because being fat is up to you. Like there is no other one, there's no other way to say it than that. If you are a person that is obese, okay? There is no one else I can say besides yourself that can make you lose that weight and gain that weight. You are a free, a free autonomous human being, especially here in the West, especially here in America. And if you are fat, that's because you decided to eat. And if you don't want to be fat anymore, you can lose weight. And if you don't want to lose weight, then, I mean, you can still complain. You have the right to complain, which I love, by the way. To keep complaining. It's awesome. It's super hilarious. But it's not that we don't think that you shouldn't have access to things. It's that you don't have access to things, and we think it's crazy that you guys would complain about that stuff, given that you're literally doing it to yourself. Like, how can I, how can I take accountability for something you did? I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. It's up to you guys. Okay. Anyway, fat phobes believe that fat people shouldn't be allowed to partake in society. <laughs> no, I think you guys should pay taxes, um, but I just wish that you guys would be healthier. Once you pay. Once you play out the fat phobes logic like this, it becomes abundantly clear that they want nothing less than t than the complete in erasure of fat people from the public life. What? Where are you getting that from? No, I don't want fat people to be erased. To be honest, I don't really care if somebody is or is not fat. No problem at all. I mean, it would most definitely be better if we had less fat people in the sense of like not killing them, obviously, just in the sense of like maybe making healthier decisions to reduce the amount of fat on your body because it's not going to benefit you. It's not going to benefit your family. It's not going to benefit society for the most part. So given that, it's probably better to not. But we live in the West. We live in America. You can be fat if you want to. All power to you. Go 100%, go 100% be fat. The problem lies when you have people that tell you that you're fat phobic for acknowledging those things. I, I get that it's uncomfortable to hear the truth and it's uncomfortable to make, to, to have your own life in your own hands and you are the only one that can actually make those decisions, but that's just the way it is. Okay, we don't live in fairytale land where you can see these decisions upon like a phantom being and then hope that being has your best interest. No, it's up to you. And you, to be honest, that's probably the best case scenario because you could change your own life, you can do the things that would make you healthier and that's awesome. Can you imagine like thinking about all the things that you can do to improve yourself and then do those things? That's awesome. Now, if there are things that you can't do. That's fine. You can't do those things. It's okay. But the things that you can change, why wouldn't you change? That's what we're saying, okay? Anyway, um, even if a fat person is a good fat actively working, working on making their body smaller, they're not allowed to participate fully in society until they're no longer fat. I don't know what you mean by they're not allowed to participate in society. If you're saying that in the sense of like, they're not allowed to participate in society in the sense of not being able to walk upstairs efficiently or partake in activities such as hiking or other things like that, sure. But it's not that society is holding them back. It's, it's, it's actually the, the universe at large. Like the fact that you are bigger means that you're going to have a harder time just navigating the world in a general way of speaking. So I wouldn't even blame it on society, but I mean, sure, you can do that. The inaccessibility is in, intentional. It's sure it's intentional. Like in the sense of like, we've built the infrastructure that we have built was built in a way to accommodate the most people possible. And because, because of that, I guess airplanes are smaller and chairs are usually not as big. And I guess hallways are kind of narrow sometimes. And then you might have a hard time walking through narrow hallways. I don't know what you want though. Like if you, if you are under the belief that we should make society more accessible to people, I'm with you. Sure. But if you're also sitting there going, we should make society more accessible for fat people, instead of acknowledging that you can't change the world, but you can change yourself to better suit the world, I feel like that is a more justified statement given the fact that 
you are in control of yourself rather than going off and trying to convince someone or multiple someones to try to change the world, which ultimately would never happen because what you guys are asking for is like a complete redesign on how society works and not even society, but the laws in general of the universe, which are never going to happen. I mean, if you honestly believe that calories in calories out don't work, then I don't even know what to tell you. You're, you, you, you probably have better luck believing in like Harry Potter or something like that. Okay. The cruelty towards fat people is intentional as it is irrational, irrational, right? Irrational. Okay. Fat phobes won't stop until they are eradicate. Fat phobes won't stop until they eradicate fat people completely. Um, I don't like, you must live in a very weird, you have a very weird way of thinking about the world. If you honestly believe, believe, and if you're considering fat phobes as just anybody that thinks it's not good to be fat, that we want to eradicate fat people. No, bro. Uh, most, I guarantee you, most people don't think like that. You might find some people, but those are the exception to the rule. They are not the rule. These people are like oddities. You understand? So sure, you'll find them, but they are not a reflection of the larger community of people. Most people are completely fine with fat people. They just don't want to be impeded by any of that stuff. Anyway, um, either materially, though dangerous dieting, weight loss surgeries, and early death, or societally, through making public life so hostile to fat people that we can't engage in it at all. So they can pretend we don't exist even if we still do. So like, what do you want us to do? Like if there was a building where that only had, like had no elevator access, do you want like elevators, right? That's what you want. You want like elevators or something like that? I don't know. Like, dude, every, you're never going to have completely everything be equal or accessible or like anything. I'm not saying that we can't make strives to make things more accessible. Like sure, sure things can be improved immeasurably, but that doesn't excuse you doing something to make it easier for everybody else, right? Like to some degree, you're going to have to take accountability for yourself and go, okay, even though I want society to help me and do things that are going to like improve for me, that's great. But like, what about you improving yourself for other people or society? What about that? Can you not do that? Has it never like occurred to you as something that you can do? Why is it always somebody else that has to help you or improve to make your life easier? Like, I think there is some value in that 100%. And life has gotten a, whole, a hell of a lot easier in the last 200 years. Obviously, you can get better. Why don't you, though, make it easier for yourself to exist in society instead of depending solely on society itself? That's craziness. Okay. So hostile for fat people. Da, da, da. This is what we mean when we say fat phobia is systemic. Systemic is an interesting word. Okay. I think that if you're, it's, it's okay to say that things are systemic. I'm not one of these people that thinks that like systemic could mean a lot of times, a lot of people think that systemic is like a law that's written directly into the books. And that's true. It, that is systemic. A hundred percent. That's like a direct form of systemic. So like, for instance, Jim Crow, Crow Jim Crow laws were systemic because they were written into law. That makes sense. But oftentimes, systemic doesn't often mean that. Systemic could mean there's a law that's written in the books without the intention of hurting a minority that does unintentionally, right? So like, for instance, a law that was placed that would help out low income, uh, 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 low income areas. And the side effect of that is a lot of black people being unfairly arrested for drugs or like other crimes that they shouldn't have been. You understand? That can also mean systemic issues, right? That can also mean systemic racism. It doesn't have to be directly right there in the plain, plain print, go arrest black people because black people are uh, really ugly and I don't like them. Like it doesn't have to say that. It could just be a law that indirectly affects people of a particular demographic that systemically, you understand more so than another group. That's what that's usually, I'm not one of these people that thinks that systemic issues are not in play. hundred percent. They are. Even if you go back, like, I don't know, like a lot of people will sit there and go, Oh, um, black people are not oppressed by today's standards because you know, black people have all these, uh, added things and like they can do, you know, America's a free country and this and that. And I always think that's true. Like it's the freest it's ever been. It's amazing to be alive in today's time frame and things like that. But can we acknowledge for a second that for like literally, uh, up until like the 1960s or 70s, black people couldn't even own houses in this particular area and you inherited all your wealth and yet you're talking down upon this person as if they had the same type of starting point that you did. Not everybody is created equal in the sense of like where the starting point is. A lot of a person's value and a lot of somebody's like how they were brought up and where they are now is determined by things they had no control over 
at all. Like I know, and you know that if you grew up in a parent, like a two parent household and you had stable parents and they were working and you went to a really good school and you grew up with really good morals and things like that. That's amazing. Now compare that to somebody that grew up in the projects, somebody that had no parents in the household that didn't go to school that maybe had to sell drugs because he had no money. These things are all determined by something that they had no control over. They had no choice but to grow up in this area. They had no choice but to have these options. You understand? And it sucks because so much of somebody's value is determined based off of things they have no control over. It is a privilege to be growing up in a, in a stable household where parents like really care for you and you have like, you know, you're going to a really good school. And it sucks to say that because there are so many people that I feel like that I know could be doing a lot of more things. Like some people that are incredibly smart, incredibly talented, but they're being held down by the restrictions of where they were born, who their parents are, and all this other stuff. And it sucks. It really sucks to say that. And this goes for anybody. Like if you were a super smart, intelligent person, but you grew up in like Vietnam and you have to like work on the fucking rice fields for your whole life, that fucking sucks because there's no way for you to get out of that situation, right? We want that person to be like an engineer. We want that person to be working in co computer sciences, right? But they can't because they're they're held down by the, the time, the place, wherever they are. And like I said, like, so much of somebody's value is determined based off of things they have no control over. So I'm not even one of these people that are going to sit there and say like systemic issues don't um, happen and that people aren't just really just fucked. Um, but at least we're in a time frame where if you're in America, especially, at least there's more mobility, you know, than there's ever been. So there's that. Anyway. Okay. Being fat is hard because you don't just run into inaccessibility that affects you, only you. For example... If I am bigger than a car seat, <laughs> crazy, bro. That's a crazy ass thing to say. For example, if I'm bigger than a car seat is built for, then I inconvenience those sitting next to me. Yeah, no fucking shit. Why are you bigger than a car seat though? You're just like, these things are red flags, I feel like, and they just never see them as red flags. If you are bigger than a car seat, that should be a wake up call for you to lose weight instead of considering that to just be, mm, I guess it's what it is. Cars should be bigger, I guess. No, you should be smaller to fit in the cars, okay? I'm sorry to say it. Uh, bigger than a car seat is built for. Then I inconven inconvenience those sitting next to me. Dude, I remember one time, Back in the day when Uber used to have, I think they now do have shares back again. This was pre-COVID where you could take Uber shares and it'd be like really, really cheap. Like I remember taking like $3 car trips from across the city. It was great. Anyway, I remember I was taking this ride and there was a, I, I, it was a shared ride. So I got into the back, right? This guy pulled up and I opened a door and this lady had a baby sitting where my, where my seat was. And I looked at her and I was like, oh, I was like, hey, um, like all the other seats are taken. Like, what do I do? And he had told the lady, like, oh, you have to move the baby. And she was like, mm-mm, I ain't moving my baby. Who, who, I ain't doing that. Like, who is this? Who who you think you are asking me that I, to move my seat? And the guy was like, oh, ma'am, this is, you know, a share, so you have to move the seat. Like, you didn't pay for two seats. You paid for one seat. Uh-uh, I ain't moving the seat. It was a whole big thing. And eventually, she did move it, and she moved it in there. And I'm just, like, looking the whole time, like, bro, what the fuck? You know, she was coming at me. She was like, who do you think you are? And I was like, I don't, what do you, I just ordered an Uber. What are you talking about? Like, why are you upset with me? Right? Anyway, it was real awkward on the drive home, but I don't give a fuck, dude. What the fuck are you doing? You know, like I put the fucking baby on your lap or something like that. Pay for two seats. I don't have to tell you. Then I inconvenience those sitting next to me. If I am bigger than a room is built for, dude, how fucking, how fat are you? Can we talk about that for a second? You must be real blig. If you're literally starting a sentence with, if I'm bigger than a room, how big are you? Jesus Christ, you're bigger than the room itself? Okay, anyway, I encroach on others, others' space. Yeah, no shit. So, like, what do you want? You want the room to be just, like, literally just massive? What the fuck are you talking about? Is it, like, you want the room to be, like, a Doctor Who TARDIS? Like, you walk in and it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside? What is the logic there? You want the, the like, we want to break the rules of the entire universe to make sure that you're comfortable in a room. That's ridiculous. Just lose weight. Just lose weight. Okay. I encroach in other spaces and it makes the fat person feel like it's a personal fault. It is a personal fault. You're so big that you're bigger than the room. That's a fucking issue. It's not the room's fault. And skinny people are often not kind of fat folks who take up space. Yeah, because most of the time those skinny people are looking at those people that are making poor decisions and now they have to pay the price for another person that makes those poor decisions when you're making the right decision to be thinner. I want to make this clear. 
it is not the fault of a fat okay first of all dude that's a crazy ass sentence right here it is not the fault it is not the fat person's fault and i understand the strain and shame it caused fat people this this world is built to exclude fat people fitting fitting of my favorite phrase inspired by the social model the social model of disability it's not the person's fault it's the world's fault it's very easy it's very easy to blame the world isn't it because it's like not really a person so you can just easily just put off all your problems on that and it's great to do that for like two minutes but then you realize that nothing ever gets done because you're not actually doing anything you're to alleviate your problems you're just pointing your finger and going that person's fault but that person's actually not real because it's a society which means it's a collective and you're no you're you're just like an individual so instead of like looking at the world as something that needs to be changed why don't you change yourself for the world you can't change the world but you could change yourself that should be the ultimate motto and i don't mean change yourself in the sense of like you should always be yourself, but if you're literally talking about something that's detrimental, something that's negatively affecting you to such a degree that you can't fit into a room anymore, you probably should lose weight. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you than that. You should just lose weight. That's just plain and simple. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. And you know I do. It helps me grow in the algorithm. I have membership, so if you want to come, uh, become a member of my channel, you can. We have emo emotes and stuff like that. I'm working on more, some more stuff for that. Uh, I have a Discord, so if you want to join the Discord, you can. I have a second channel. I know I'm talking a lot of stuff here. Second channel, those will all be linked in the description of this video and the channel description. If you watched the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in tree. And you can actually tell me specifically what kind of tree do you like the most. I like oaks. Oaks are cool because it reminds me of Professor Oak from Pokemon, and I thought he was a cool character, and I liked the way his head was shaped. He was a cool guy, and he helped Ash for a long time, and hashtag Professor Oak is the goat, and uh, you're you're a goat too, a fantastic, beautiful, amazing goat, but not a real goat. I mean like a goat in terms of like the greatest of all time, the ability for you to be responsible for yourself and other people around you. I want to lick your eyebrows consistently all the time. I want to lubricate your chin with the sensation of my tongue consensually of course because i think you're a beautiful specimen of human being and i think it's unreasonable for you to assume that i wouldn't want to do those things given the fact that you look as beautiful as you do on a daily basis i think that's crazy that you can go around looking that good and think that i wouldn't have anything to say or do to try to like i don't know lubricate your chin consensually of course anyway if you want to check out my social media it'll be linked down below in the description it's just my instagram my twitter and my Discord, if you want to join any of that stuff, like I said, second channel too, that's there too. That's just like stream highlights. I upload on that at least once a day, at least I try to. Anyway, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 